It's just been revealed at the latest Pokemon Presents that Pokemon Legends ZA, a Legends game set in Lumio City in the Kalos region, is coming in 2025. And it's relatively safe to assume that we'll be getting starter Pokemon in the same vein of what we got with Legends Arceus. Three previously released starter Pokemon from different regions and alternate final evolutions. So today, we'll be taking a look at all of the starter Pokemon and give our best guess as to which ones have the highest ability of showing up next year in this new game. We'll also be speculating what any of the possible new Final Evolution forms might look like, based on what we've already got before. So let's get started. So let's just start out with the list of all 27 starter Pokemon that we have currently up to Gen 9. And right off the bat, I want to knock off a few starters that straight up would not make sense here. For instance, the mons that were starters in Legends Arceus, Cyndaquil, Rowlet, and Oshawott have a very high chance of not showing up here, as they've already received this treatment. Next, I think that the Gen 6 starters will 100% appear in the game the same way that the Gen 4 starters did in Arceus. I'm not entirely sure in what capacity that they might appear in, but I think it makes total sense to have them booted off the list here too. So that leaves us with a total of 21 Pokemon to choose from. Now it's also important to note that this game does not look like it's going to act in the same style of Legends Arceus. It seems like it might not even take place in the past due to the futuristic vibe that the trailer was giving off. So who knows what else might be different from the original Legends game. Now because of this, from this point onwards, I'll be making a couple more assumptions that might just need to be taken with a great assault here. First and foremost, I truly don't believe that we're getting any Gen 4 starters with how much they've been around recently in BDSP, Legends Arceus, and even in the Indigo disc to a certain extent, but so are all the other starters. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and just take them out and bring the count down to 18. And here's where it starts to get tricky. I am of the opinion that Game Freak would not take starters from the same generations that they pulled from last time, that being Gens 2, 5, and 7. So if that's the case, no no more Chikorita, Totodile, Snivy, Tepig, Litten, or Poplio. And it's a real shame too, because in my opinion, three of these guys deserve the most amount of love in the form of an alternate final evolution the most. So that brings us down to just 12 possible Pokemon. The Gen 1, Gen 3, Gen 8, and Gen 9 starters. And here, there's just one thing that I keep going back to. Would Game Freak make an alternate final evolution to a starter introduced in the same generation? I know this isn't exactly the same idea, but they did just make a new Applin evolution that evolved once in each set of the DLC in Scarlet and Violet. I do think that they did this intentionally, in the same vein of the Slowbro and Slowking variants in the Sword and Shield DLC. I feel like creating an alternate final Evo for these guys now would just take away from their original forms just entirely too fast. So here, I think we'll kick them to the side for now, leaving us with the three generations that I think have the best chance of being picked in Pokemon Legends Z. EA. Now let's try to speculate on what combination within this pack of starters has the highest chance of being used. Let's start by taking a look at the relationship between the starters in Legends Arceus. We got Cyndaquil, the fire starter from Gen 2, Oshawott, the water starter from Gen 5, and Rowlet, the grass starter from Gen 7. So if we want to use the same pattern starting with the lowest Gen number, we'd have Charmander, the fire starter from Gen 1, Mudkip, the water starter from Gen 3, and Grookey, the grass starter from Gen 8. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking the look of this set. We all know how much Game Freak likes to shove Charizard in our faces, and to give it a split evolution, I don't know, I could see it going either way. In one hand, you're giving more attention to the line in general, and on the other, you're taking attention away from Charizard into a different split evolution. Not to mention, we also know that this game is bringing back Mega Evolution. So how would Mega Evolution work with the original Final Evolutions to both Gen 1 and Gen 3 starters? Especially knowing that in Legends Arceus, you can't access the regular final evolutions at all in the game. So maybe in this game, Game Freak would let you choose between them, or maybe even get them in the post game or something. But anyways, let's just assume that the regular mega evolutions of these starters will be accessible in some form, as we know for a fact that Game Freak would want to put Mega Charizard in their marketing once again. And honestly, for that reason, I would put this combination on the lower chances of things, as they wouldn't want to muddy up Charizard's attention and marketing. So let's keep moving here. It seems that there are two 
sets of combinations remaining. And the question is, how would we split them up? I think if we just rotate the order to the right by type, we'll arrive at our next possible combination in Bulbasaur, Torchic, and Sobble. And this combination, I would say, works pretty well here. Again, the only downside being the two Megas, and it'd be really great to see Game Freak take another swing, it's something cool for Sobble, as I think we were all a little let down with this guy. But the more and more I think about it, Game Freak wouldn't want to muddy up the Mega for Blaziken either, as it was a highly marketed Mega in X and Y, along with it being a very popular Mega in general. So I would say this combination has a slightly higher chance than the last combination in general. And that just leaves three more Pokemon, a single combination in Squirtle, Trico, and Scorebunny. And guys, come on. This just feels right. You got a trio of Pokemon that, in my opinion, could very much use an alternate final evolution. And with Scorbunny being the latest poster child for Game Freak and still being relatively hot off the press with no alternate Evos or anything like that, with the exception of the Gigantamax form, but who cares about those? This is looking good, and there's a lot of room for designs for this group of starters in particular. I think this combo has a high potential for being chosen here. So that's the pick I would go with for Pokemon Legends ZA. Now, I'd like to suggest some ideas for what these alternate evos could look like for this combination. With the Squirtle line, depending on whether or not this game takes place in the past or future, I could see the alternate form becoming part rock or steel respectively, mimicking the technology of the time that it's in. For Trico, I think the alternate evolution form could go in a lot of ways, either diving deeper into its dragon-like appearance, maybe going into a dark direction, or maybe even something way out of left field like Fairy, giving it a completely different appearance. And with Score Bunny, the obvious pick is to double down on the soccer or football player and make him fire electric as he's so fast, giving it a more electric appearance in the process. Or you could go in a different direction and give some sort of French influence and go with like handball or something instead of soccer and make him fire fighting with a buff physique. With them all having a lot of room for new character design and inspiration and the Squirtle and Trico lines megas not being crazily favored by Game Freak, I think this combination of starters has the highest potential potential for being chosen here. I know this game announcement came out of left field, but I am beyond excited for how much potential this game could possibly bring to the table. Whether that be some sort of city building aspect in the same vein as Pal World, where you'd have to use the Pokemon in your pastures to build up Lumios, or any other new locations to the city that might lead to further investigation of lore. But either way, if this is the set of starters we're getting, I'd be picking my boy Trico every single time, as he was always the last choice for me in Hoenn, but in this scenario put up against Squirtle and Score Bunny, it's the easy answer every single time. Let me know if my line of logic makes sense, and if you think that there's a better combination of starters out there for this game in the comments below. And if you like what you saw, be sure to like the video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking to explore the Kalos region once again, I'll be streaming a Nuzlocke through Pokemon X using only Pokemon introduced in the 6th generation. So if you're interested, come swing by the stream right here on YouTube. And with that, I've been O Creations, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!